The following KQED production was produced in high definition. Yes, check these people. It's all about looking your plate. The food was just fabulous. I should be in psychoanalysis for the amount of money I spend in restaurants. I had a horrible experience. I don't even think we were at the same <laughs> restaurant. And everybody, I'm sure, saved room for those desserts. You better. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. We have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, criminal records tech Mary DiLorenzo summons you to attend her pick so that you can share in the fragrant spices, fantastic aromas, and fabulous flavors. You won't need a warrant to search the menu to find a great meal. And residential realtor Patrick Adair gets the chills at his place. Ooh. And it's not the property that causes it. He feels another presence in the room, a presence other than the tuxedoed waiters, that is. But first, middle school teacher Emily Kolach isn't interested in sampling her academy's cafeteria. She cuts class to enjoy the homegrown organic produce adorning the crisp cornmeal crust at her favorite spot. It's on Valencia Street at 14th in San Francisco, and it's called Pauline's Pizza. We start from scratch. We grow almost everything that we serve, or as much as possible. I choose really wonderful seeds. I search high and low for them. And we plant them ourselves, and we grow them ourselves, and we harvest them, and um, bring them here, and serve them. We grow grapes organically in our ranch in Calveras County, where we also have a bonded winemaking facility. We make our own wine, which is really delicious, which we sell here, and it's been very well received. And we serve that wine in our wine bar at the back of this restaurant. When I think of Pauline's, I think of our pizza, which is incredibly delicious and layered with many, you know, great flavors that interact and explode in your mouth and are very delicate like an Italian pasta. I think of our ice creams and our sorbets, which are made for, from our own um, homegrown items. Um, I think of our butterscotch pudding and chocolate mousse. I think of our salads, which are so incredibly fresh they can walk out the door. Now, I know why you like Pauline so much. It's that butcher paper and the crayons on the table, isn't it? It reminds you of school? Absolutely. <laughs> I feel like I'm at work, but then I have a glass of wine and eat a little pizza, and then I remember that I'm at my favorite restaurant. So. <laughs> I think my favorite thing about Pauline's um, is the seasonal ingredients that they use, the organic vegetables, the interesting toppings on the pizza. So, I mean, I love pizza almost any way, but <laughs> um, this is, you know, this is better than most. And um, it's, it's the really unique combinations, the laid back atmosphere, and the locally minded um, ingredients that really keeps me going. Do you have a favorite pizza? Of all their choices, I know there are many. I do. I try to branch out, but of course, I am a creature of habit, and I always go back to my original favorite, which is feta cheese, sun-dried tomatoes, and artichoke hearts. Ooh, can't help it. But I do try to taste the nightly specials because every night they have a vegetarian special and a meat special, mm -hmm. and they're always really unique combinations, things that I would never think of putting together. Right. So I really try to branch out and, and try some new things. And you had a meat sausage did. uh, pizza, didn't you? Mary? I did. I did. That's their homemade sausage. It, it was okay. It, I've had better so homemade sausage. But I mean, it wasn't. You should see her face. It was okay. <laughs> She's going, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> How could it not be great? <laughs> 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 yes, I know. I'm just a rebel. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was kind of bland. Really? No, I, I felt. I felt. Just that particular pizza? Actually, I wasn't thrilled with it. <laughs> I wasn't like I, I hated it. Uh -huh. It's just um, I didn't like the crust. Oh. I did not. I. 
it was because way these are thin crust. These are very thin. I like thin, thin crust, mm -hmm. and I think pizza is a real personal thing. Mm -hmm. Right. But this was like for me, like uh, foreign. Mm -hmm. It had too much cornmeal on it for me, and it was too crispy, kind of like a biscuit cracker uh. thing. For me. I don't know. It wasn't bad. I just don't think I'd, I'd go out of my way to go there. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, yeah, Patrick. That's funny. It's my, well, I took my family there, and my son, who's the um, who's so quote unquote pizza expert, absolutely loves it, and he plowed through a, a, a medium Italian all by himself. <laughs> Is he five or fifteen? Wow. No, this is the twenty-year-old, <laughs> and I have my little three-year-old, and impressive. usually he just picks off the little toppings, but right. he just went right into the right into the whole pizza and just loved it. Right. And um, I know what you mean about the New. York style thin crust pizza so this is yeah. a little bit different than what you might get on that New York style but I found it refreshing mm -hmm. and it is it's all about as you said the organics they have their own farm in Berkeley that they that they produce their own garden that they get their their vegetables for their salads and for their pizzas yeah we had the the chef special salad mm -hmm. with their um, really nice organically grown lettuce but I'd like the raspberries in there and that's what caught our eye when we saw it over at the other table and my wife said I want one of those it's a nice touch rimmed with raspberries mm -hmm. isn't it Right. Yes, it was. It was great. We had the Caesar, mm -hmm. and I'm more of a traditionalist. They call it um, authentic Caesar dressing, and I doubt if you could find a raw egg on there mm -hmm. or any anchovies. <laughs> I mean, there was very little dressing. It was pretty, right. and it was the, the baby romaine, but again, underwhelmed. Right. And that's one of the things that I love about their salads <laughs> because I eat a lot of salad and I love it, but I usually find that there's too much dressing. Mm -hmm. So for me at Pauline's, what I love is that I can taste the greens and that they are grown nearby and they are absolutely fresh and seasonal. I want to taste those and have the dressing be in the background. So that's my that's what I love about the salads. But what's your argument back against get the, more the crust? Oh, get more dressing. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Ask for more. <laughs> more dressing. I think that that's Crust is delicious. I have to, I, you know, I, I, I love the cornmeal on there. I think that the crust is so flavorful. And I'll, oftentimes when I eat pizza, I end up leaving the crust. Right. You know, behind by, I always eat my crust at Pauline's. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> and you can actually buy pizza, pizza dough and yes. take it home. Another yeah. of my favorite features mm -hmm. of the restaurant. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> shells, small shells come three to a package, and it's something like $6 mm -hmm. or $6.50. Right. And they're, they're um, par-baked and, and frozen, and you can just pop that out of your freezer and throw your own toppings on there, and it's way better than delivery. Right. Let me ask you about wine. I like, like the ah, wine. There we go. I, okay. <laughs> I knew you liked yes, the wine. I did like the wine. I, <laughs> and the, they make their own wine. They do. They that was their very own good. Organically farmed uh, vineyards. It was good. It was very California. good. Mm, I absolutely. think just the ambiance of the restaurant was very nice and not typical to the normal pizza parlor where you can sit down and have fine linens and a cloth napkin right. and look around and see some Picasso reprints and his blue period. And <laughs> it was just really neat to be able to get in there. You weren't walking into a drab, dark place mm -hmm. with brown right. Naga hide chairs. The crowd can be really diverse um, and uh, oftentimes there are families and there are young people and there are people you so know. So you've got tattoos and pacifiers. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit of everything right. and uh, to me that's nice because so many places especially in that area in the mission are very young and trendy and which is fun but uh, you know it's nice to go out and feel that you're enjoying a meal with the community I think so that's another of my favorite right. things about Pauline's. And desserts. I did on uh, my last visit have um, the special sundae, mm -hmm. um, which had two different ice creams. Um, one was a rose water and wild strawberry mm. ice cream. Wow. Um, and the other thing I had was an olive oil gelato with um, sea salt. And it was oh, absolutely wow. delicious. Um, it was a great way to end the meal. It was, you know, both desserts were, were rich and interesting, but not too heavy um, because I always eat all my pizza too. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of price, Mary, did you feel it was I mean, okay? It, it was, was reasonable. Okay. Actually, it was reasonable for mm -hmm. the for the quality mm -hmm. and the wine. Right, the wine was very reasonable. All right, if people are going to go to Pauline's, um, Pauline's is a great place to go for fresh ingredients, unique toppings on thin crust pizza in a laid back atmosphere that is fun but not too divey um, and and just delicious. Patrick? I would think that uh, Pauline's would be great for anybody that's health conscious, that just wants a great pizza, and that would like to, to taste some great wine at a great value, bring your family there. All right, locale pizza, imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Mary? Well, I just have a different feeling about it. Again, pizza's personal, 
but I think I would go back for the wine and dessert. Mm. <laughs> Give that a try. <laughs> if you would like to try Pauline's Pizza, it's on Valencia near 14th in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-552-2050. It's open for dinner Tuesday through Saturday. Reservations are accepted for parties of eight or more, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $20. Mary says it's criminal just how good the food is at her pick, and the titles on the menu reflect the big screen stars of two continents, although the flavors remain firmly rooted in northern India and Pakistan. Her restaurant choice is in the Lower Haight in San Francisco, and it's called Roti. We're hip, we're cool, we're not your regular run-of-the-mill sitar playing Indian restaurant. We play electronic music from DJs worldwide. While our guests are enjoying their meal, they can also enjoy our old Indian and Pakistani movies that are being projected in the background. We only use the minimum amount of oil so it doesn't interfere with the taste of the curry and you can really taste what you are eating. We keep the spices to a minimum where you can taste the vegetables and the meat dishes that you have. Our naans are made to order and they don't leave you with the feeling that you have a brick in your stomach after you consume them. At Roti, you don't have to spend a ton of money to have a good time. Mary, when you walk into Roti, it's sort of like the back lot of a Bollywood set, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> it is. Is that what you like about it? I like the smell. Mm -hmm. When you walk in, you just get hit with all those it, fresh spices and the smell of the tandoori oven. And then it's just, and the way it's decorated, it's very simple. And the, oh, the, the walls are sort of curry colored, aren't yes, they? Yes, I love that. Saffron curry, a little tamarind. Oh, it's great. And what's your favorite dish? <gasps> Chicken tikka masala which I'm so craving right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, let me get on the phone. Uh, would you? Yeah. <laughs> Have it sent to the set here. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like velvet to me. It's just, oh, it's just the chicken is tender, and just the spices are so fresh. That's what I, I keep saying to everybody. It's just everything is fresh there. My complaint about it um, was only that it didn't have enough chicken in it for mm -hmm. me. Um, I thought the sauce was very good, but I we had l four little pieces of chicken in all of the sauce, and I was glad that we had the biryani to soak the sauce up, but I wanted more chicken in, in mine. Mm -hmm. um, but chicken tikka masala is my favorite mm -hmm. dish, too. So <laughs> Creamy so, tomato. Yeah. We had the three different tandoori which was very good. Mm -hmm. We had the fish tandoori, the chicken tandoori, and the lamb. And it was amazing how the d when it was presented, the colors of the dishes matched the colors of the walls. <laughs> and it, that just brightened everything up. It was like, wow, this is great. And then my uh, wife, who I brought, and one of our friends, we tasted the um, the fish tandoori. And my gosh, they had they actually fought over it. Really? They thought it was so delicious. Yes, Did thank you, you very much. Did you tell them they could order oh. another one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, had, we ordered the three with the bread and the rice and, mm -hmm. and gosh that, that filled us up we all loved it and what besides chicken tikka masala do you enjoy when you go to oh let's see hmm. the lamb ghost which is really good that the flavor it's very bright flavor like a, a lemon almost on it like a crusty oh it's so good and the biryanis I've always loved I've tried two of their biryanis there and they're just bursting with um, like garbanzo beans mm -hmm. and parsley and the mm -hmm. flavor is there what else are we? Oh, the samosas. I love them. And that's sort of the test of an Indian restaurant, so. is it? Yeah. Samosas yeah. or pakora, or to, to really mm -hmm. say, is this a good samosa? Mm -hmm. And they and they hand make their um, mint chutney. 
mm -hmm. which I think is delicious too. Mm -hmm. And another way to judge is sort of the non bread. Mm -hmm. You know, oh. Oh. Well, how we is ate someone's non bread, right? <laughs> oh. Delicious. Fresh. Whether it's the fresh. onion Everything or the that's fresh. We yep. had the garlic. Mm -hmm. The garlic. Right. Yeah, and we were just able to soak up what other sauces were left and just stab it around. It was great. Yeah. I mean, so hot and right. perfectly blistered. Done, yes. you know, but not too done, not dry right. at all. Right. The non was incredible. And always that ice cold beer. <laughs> Maharaja. <laughs> Big tall glass. Big tall but, bottle. But they do carry Indian uh, wine, actually. I had my first Indian wine. Mm -hmm. I have never had a wine from India, but they had a um, Shiraz, which is what I ordered, and a white wine. They I have a Chenin Blanc a, yeah, as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, it was good. It was spicy and, and um, warm. It kind of felt like the sun. It, <laughs> it was fun to have a wine from the, you know, country of origin. So fun. And the menu's fun to read. Oh, completely. Yeah. Oh, it's just, the guy could be on David Letterman, whoever wrote that menu. <laughs> they have a sense yeah. of humor. Right. Uh -huh. right. It matches the decor, I thought. You know, it's, they really know how to create an atmosphere with the bright colors and the movie posters and the funny menu. You know, it's really, it's an experience mm -hmm. that they and complete. See, you learned about Lollywood mm -hmm. there. Now, <laughs> Bollywood, of course, yes. is the Indian Hollywood, but Pakistan, Pakistan Hollywood is Lollywood. I mean, yep. who knew? <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't know. I didn't know. Now, you're mm -hmm. going to have to give everybody the trick of parking, though, in that neighborhood. Yeah, right? that's a tough one. You just have to cruise it mm -hmm. just with everybody else that's kind of trying right. to cruise that yeah. area to find the parking. It, that is a nightmare. And sometimes yeah. there are little sketchy areas. There. Yeah, that's kind of part of the floor show, yeah. I think. You know, you kind of look out that window and go, oh, yeah, it's law and order going on. <laughs> it's like, it's <laughs> oh, how fun. Oh, here comes the cops. This is fun. You know, so. Yeah, I got mm -hmm. a little bit of that Irish luck, I guess. I, I find parking easy. Here, I'll rub your head. <laughs> 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 All right, this is your spot. Wrap it up for everybody. Okay. Do they get bang for their buck? Is this a spot to go for? Totally for bang value? for their buck. I plead guilty <laughs> to the passion I feel for this place. <laughs> it's just, it's a little diamond in a rough, in a little kind of a eh, chancy neighborhood, but the food is just exquisite and fresh. All right. Emily? Yeah, I think for um, a good neighborhood place, casual place, fresh meals, I would like to go back and try again. And it seems like the kind of place to me where you try and you find your favorites, right? And those really stand out. And maybe some of the dishes aren't, uh, you know, you wouldn't necessarily order as often. Okay, and Patrick. When I asked what the name meant, roti, they said flatbread or bread and butter. And I think that this is a restaurant that'll last the, the test of time, and it'll be there for many, many years. Huh? That's good to know. If you would like to visit Roti, it's on Hate at Webster in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-552-8309. It's open for lunch and dinner every day, closed Mondays for lunch. Reservations are accepted for parties of five or more, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $15. Patrick escapes the hustle and bustle of Silicon Valley and meanders the country road to the first two-story hotel ever built in California. For him, the French menu in this idyllic location makes for a perfect dining experience. It's in the New Almaden foothills of San Jose, and it's called La Forêt. One of the nicest compliments I hear from our customers over and over is that your food is so consistent. Whenever we come back, it's always the same excellent food. That is one of the nicest things we hear over and over at La Forêt. Building is a historical building. It used to be a place where the Quicksilver miners used to live. Quicksilver is mercury. That's what they used to purify uh, gold in old days. They did it until 1928 when the value of Quicksilver went down 
They closed the place, actually they made a bordello out of it for a couple of years. And then they changed it to a restaurant uh, in 1930s. And in 78, we took over and uh, changed it to La Forêt, French classic food. No bordello going on anymore. <laughs> Okay, Patrick, are there really ghosts in this old house? Well, I've been going to this place for 20 years, and they, uh, when the very first time I went there, the waiter had mentioned that you might feel a little cold chill through the air or listen for that drop spoon, and it just made me want to go back more and more. So it was one of those uh, great little nuances to the restaurant that was uh, one of the things that I enjoyed so much. But it's not the only compelling thing, obviously, about La Forêt. What, what other things do you uh, adore about this restaurant? What makes me so passionate about it is just the great food, the great service, and being able to go away five miles outside of town and just feel like you're escaped the whole entire world. And you have just wonderful people attending to you, two or three waiters and t putting down the napkin for you, pulling out your chair, and just the, the awesome food and just the, um, the great different types of wild game that they have during right. the um, different times of the year. And so you can call up and find out what their specials are. And you can um, have them call you when they have specials uh, that are coming available so that you'll know. Oh, that's nice. Now, if you can actually make it and not get lost, right, <laughs> 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 uh -huh. Was this something, did you expect mm -hmm. this, this um, upscale uh, place I at the end of this? I was very skeptical, I have to be honest, because I looked at the website and I thought, oh, it looks a little has-been, and tuxedoed waiters, not my style, you know. And so, you know, then we got a little lost, but as we drove down the road a little more and more, it was so beautiful. The setting is gorgeous. And by the time we arrived, I was like, all right, I'm ready to give this place a chance. And I'm glad I did, because it was wonderful. I, we had such a nice meal there. They were so friendly. The, the atmosphere was really relaxing. It is stepping outside of, of a time and outside of the, the busyness of the Bay Area. And, it was it was really nice and the food was great too. <laughs> Stepping into the to the forest. Well let's talk about the food because that's what really mm -hmm. this is, place is about. Um, let's kick off with the tasting menu. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> that, Mary? It, it, oh. Well my husband and I both got a tasting menu and I got the one that had the Kobe beef. Uh -huh. And what else? Oh, there was so much food. It ah was just tuna? wonderful. They the ahi tuna was okay. I thought delicious. mine was a little done more done, but it, I didn't take it back. <laughs> I ate. I mean, it was delicious. You're and a woman yeah. after my own heart. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, okay, it's all right. Fine, but eat it. <laughs> and then um, the quail, which I'd never had, and this huckleberry mm. sauce was a mm. perfect pairing. Mm. Absolutely perfect. Everything was divine. The service mm -hmm. was impeccable. Mm -hmm. But it's a very really comfortable place. Mm -hmm. You don't right, feel so stuffy. Or you don't feel Not at all. Yes, That's exactly. That's the surprise. Yeah. You know, because you feel that it's going to be stuffy. And even the menu, I mean, I am not a big meat eater, and I thought, oh my gosh, this menu is entirely meat. And I got there and said, ah, what the heck, I'm going to have the, the six-course tasting menu, which was more food than I could ever oh. imagine eating. And every bit was delicious. It was so good. Uh, talking about wild boar, I mean, that's something I would never order. I, it was so good. It was so tender and so flavorful, and everything was delicious. I, it was, it was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And when you <laughs> go... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like my restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> because it is pricey. I yes, mean, it's oh. an expensive place, oh. special occasion possibly, mm -hmm. yeah. although mm -hmm. there you know, are quite a bit of people that go in and mm -hmm. out of there, not dressed in, you know, they're in jeans. Or you right, can be right, comfortably right. dressed. Absolutely. You can yeah. be. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why I liked it, because right. I don't want to go out and spend that kind of money and have to be uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I wasn't, and it was that just made it better for me, just because the waiters are in tuxedos doesn't mean that right. you have to be and mm -hmm. that's you know that's great and well so the wine list is quite is quite nice I mean it's it's not overwhelming in terms of its selections there's plenty of depth to it um, and the prices are quite reasonable uh, there's an older uh, sort of Cabernet section that mm. really collectors would uh, would die to taste many of those wines at mm -hmm. prices that are really uh, very very affordable so um, you know if you're gonna go down and have venison or steak look at those big reds Ooh. yes mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely Absolutely, and then you always the waiter before as you walk in and you sit down and you're ordering your um, your appetizers. He will always ask you for the pièce de résistance. Would you like the 
grand Meunier souffle. Mm -hmm. Everybody. <gasps> oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> And chef and owner Johnny, everybody just calls him Johnny, right? Uh, you know, that that's his specialty. Yes. Oh. oh my gosh, it just melts in your oh. mouth and I can tell you enjoy it. It was a work of art. <laughs> it was an absolute, when I, my spoon went into that oh. souffle, it just went <sighs> <laughs> and just into that creme anglaise with the, oh, it was so good. Mm -hmm. All right, this is your restaurant, so you have to uh, convince people <laughs> that they need to drive far and long yeah. <laughs> down a winding road to get to La Forêt. Well, I think that if you are interested in getting a little bit of true spirit and getting mm -hmm. a little bit of the real spirit, <laughs> you'll be able to really enjoy yourself with one of the most fantastic, enjoyable meals that you would ever experience in your whole entire life. And so you have to at least go once, go for a birthday, go for an anniversary, do something special, but take your family or friends or even a great business dinner mm -hmm. to La Ferre. Mm -hmm. Is this a hidden gem? Absolutely. For a perfect sort of traditional special occasion place when you feel like getting away, this is the place to go. All right, Mary, are you dreaming about that souffle? Oh, yes. <laughs> and I just, the, the, trick, the trip is long. That's the one thing. It's like an hour and a half to get down there. But once you get there, it's wor it really is worth the trip. Mm -hmm. And it is It's for very special occasions, just, just because of the, the travel time. Mm -hmm. If it was here, I'd be there. <laughs> for Grand Marnay Souffle Weekly. <laughs> well, if you would like to try La Forêt, it's on Bertram Road in San Jose. The telephone number is 408-997-3458. It's open Tuesday through Sunday for dinner with brunch on Sunday. Reservations are required, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $75. Well, I have to thank my fabulous guests on this week's show, Emily Kolach, Mary DiLorenzo, and Patrick Adair. Emily's choice of Pauline's pizza underwhelmed Mary, who prefers a more traditional pie when she goes out. But Patrick loved the organic ingredients and thinks all pizza lovers should give it a try. Next, Mary's pick, roti, left Emily hoping for a little more meat, but she thinks it's an ideal casual neighborhood restaurant. Patrick thought it was awesome and recommends everything, even reading the menu. <laughs> And lastly, Patrick's destination of La Forêt was a resounding success, even if the price is high. It's a perfect place to celebrate anything. Well, that's it once again. Please don't forget to visit our website where you can find photos, recipes, and my notes on the wines I serve to all the guests. They're terrific, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> on the website, you can view this and every show, or you can download one to podcast. There's also a link to the KQED Wine Club. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sobraco, and I hope to see you then. Cheers. 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 Yay. Woo fabulous. Woohoo. This show is available in high definition, on demand, and via podcast. For additional information on the restaurants featured, to comment, or to apply to be on the show, go to our website at kqed.org slash checkplease. A KQED television production.